Hey, what's going on, everyone? So good to have everyone joining us today at Allison Park Church Online. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name's Joe. And my name's Gilbert. We're so glad to have you with us here this weekend. Even if you can't be here in person, we believe that, you know, church is everywhere. Church is in your homes as well. Uh, So we're excited for all the things we have today. Yep, and I think we have people blowing up the chat boxes right now. Kelly, what are people saying? Guys, it's so exciting to see that so many people are tuned in and, uh, you know, we've kind of got this battle going on between Butler Campus and Ohio River. Uh They are showing out and they do not mind shouting out their campus, which I love. So we want to encourage you guys, leave your name and where you're watching from. And one of our values here is to live connected. And we just think that it's awesome that we can do that still online. That's awesome. That's great. So we'll check back in with you in just a little bit here, Kelly. Keep moderating that chat for us. But I, I have to say this, Joe, one of the things I'm most excited for today is our egg hunt. So as you guys may know, we do a big egg hunt every single year here here at Allison Park Church. And unfortunately this year we couldn't do it in person. So we've decided to bring it to you all online. So get ready for Orlando's Orlando's Virtual Virtual Egg Hunt. Hunt. Oh wait, what 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 happened? Hold on. Did you step on that wire again? Video. I think I might. I think I might I think have unplugged wrong. something. Something's. That wasn't. Did, I don't think that was the right video. Did you unplug that over there? Maybe. Let me look. Help! I don't... Ooh. Captain Vince is stuck and he needs our help. Wait a uh... second, Captain Fit. Gil, did you leave the system log into Fortnite again? Yes, but I don't know what this is. I haven't uh, seen this before. Wait, wait a second. Who are you, robot dude? I'm a robot from the. Figure the robot thing out. And I need your help. Well, okay, I gathered the fact that you're a robot. Thanks for pointing that out, Captain Obvious. But here's the thing. What what, what can we do to help? What are you talking about? Well, Captain Faze did it again. Got himself trapped in the virtual realm. And the only way we're going to get him out is by finding all the virtual eggs he left behind. Hmm. Well, hey, we have a lot of people watching online. I bet we could probably get them to help find the, the virtual eggs. Yeah, but hold on. Before we promise that, here's the thing, Mr. Robot Dude from the future. <laughs> I... I think if we do this, right? Mama said don't do anything for free. So, like, I'm expecting we get paid for this. So, like, there's got to be some sort of reward, right? Well, uh, so much for the selfless hero, huh? But <laughs> if I know Captain Faze well, there will be a lot of eggs. So, I suppose that would warrant a reward. And, I mean, who cares? It's coming out of his pocket anyway. Hey. Thank you, Captain Faze. Well, why don't we do this? I know a lot of kids are home right now, hopefully watching. And uh, they don't have a lot of places to go, but I bet they're playing a lot of video games. So we can give a $50 video game package to one person that can help us find the eggs. Wait, I'm going to go do that. See ya. I'm going to no, go No, no, no. Get, get back here. You, you can't win. We oh. cover this all the Dang time. <laughs> this isn't for you. Here's how it's going to work. For those of you that are watching at home, if you find all of the eggs uh, that are hidden throughout our time together, and you get that correct number, you can direct message us. If you get that correct, the first 10 people to get the answer right, they're going to be entered into a drawing and somebody's going to walk away with a $50 video game package. And we will let you know uh, when that ends. We're starting right now. Uh, But as soon as we're done, we'll let you know and you can start texting those in. Yeah, so we're going to let you go, Orlando. We'll talk to you in just a little bit, all right? Thank you for cleaning up another one of Captain Faze's messes. Anything we can do to help. Good to see you, Orlando. Wait, wait a second. Do you see that right there? Right, right that's, on the camera. No, that's the lens. Joe, no, no, don't no, touch no. that. Right, we can't right leave here. this line. Hold You're on, right back. To... Did you, was this here the whole time? Was what? Oh, that's an egg. Huh. Okay, well, let's add that one to the total. Hopefully, we have a lot of kids that are watching us right now. And unfortunately, we're not able to have Kid Zone in the building, but we're still trying to engage with a lot of our kids. We have something called Kid Zone TV. We want to have a lot of good content for our kids. Yeah, and I have to tell you, Kid Zone TV is one of the most exciting things that we have here that we offer for our kids. And it's because we take the entire Kid Zone experience and we put it online for your kids to be able to access. So there's games, there's music, there's a really good message to it. So after the experience is done today, I want to encourage you if you have kids tune into that because it's going to be great yep and you can find that all at allisonparkchurch.online yeah now we have uh we have every single week we have something called red that we do on wednesday nights from 7 to 7 30 and this is specifically for your students so middle school high school we do that um and we we have uh this last this last week we had some really good content where we're talking a lot about our, our emoji series so we're having students send in an emoji to us and that will preach off of so if you have a student in your household make sure that they tune into that yep and red tv happens every wednesday at seven o'clock why don't we check out what happened last week Messy Latte sent us in this this shrimp emoji. Which someone said was like a krill 
Like, they were like, it's a krill. And I was like, that is not a krill. Wow. He's got beady eyes just like Josh Krill's, though. He like kind of has the same like one <laughs> level of intensity. Ouch! It's like a shrimp cyclops. <laughs> That's a shrimp clop. <laughs> the shrimp clop! <laughs> Here we go. So when I think of shrimp, here's what I think of. I think of being small and I think of being weak. All of us have weakness. Just the very definition, you know, the fact that we're imperfect, that we are weak, means that we need Jesus. And if you've given your life to God, if you've made that choice to follow Jesus, the great news is he covers the rest. That in the middle of our weakness, God's strength is made perfect. Yeah, so it was, it was pretty exciting. You guys can tell we have that um, every Wednesday night from 7 to 7.30. And some would say it's quite excellent. <laughs> well, not only do we have that going on on Wednesday at 7 o'clock, we also have things happening every weekday uh, called Red Dailies. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with that, we literally start with Minecraft Monday and then on Fortnite Friday. But we have some sort of online experience for your students to be able to engage with so that they have a way to connect with their friends. And then in addition to that, we have Devos that we post on our Red Instagram every single day, Monday through Friday. So make sure you check that out at students.red. Yeah, a lot of great content for our teenagers. You want to make sure that you uh, take advantage of that. Yeah, now some of you at home have been asking this since the quarantine tarted, started. You've been saying, I would still really like to make a difference in my, in my family's life, in my community's life, but I'm not exactly sure how. Yep, and the best thing to do is to actually share. Hey, I wanted to give that to you. Oh, thank uh, you. You can share our online experience with people. If you're watching on Facebook, just click that share button. If you're watching on YouTube, you can copy that link and even text it to people. Maybe even get on the phone and call somebody and invite them to join in our online experience. Yeah, and speaking of friends, we actually have some friends joining in with us uh, live here this morning. Let's check in. Let's check in with our first friend. How you doing, fam? Hey, what's up, Abraham? Abraham. What's up? So good. good to see you, man. So let me ask this, Abraham. How many eggs have you found so far? Uh, one. One? <laughs> okay, you're doing all right. Not so bad. We've definitely had more than that, He's but I actually catch don't up, know how many though. we've That's had. That's okay. <laughs> That's good. Well, awesome. Thanks for checking in, Abraham. Anything you'd like to say on the stream before, before we let you go? Uh, I mean, I hope everybody's having fun. That's true. I hope that too. Fun. I am at least making all these puns. All right, we'll talk to you later, Abraham. Take care. We also have Brian Lippert tuning in here. How you doing, Brian? Hey, what's doing up? Good, man. We got Brian and Fam Toy Story characters. and Jesse. There she is. That's true, Brian. Now That's I have right. to give you, uh, Brian. I have to give you a compliment, dude. Have you been lifting? Cause you're looking <laughs> yoked, dude. You look big. You look like you've been putting on some weight. I, I have, man. This board. <laughs> it's, it's doing some good for my body, so, you know. That's awesome. Trying is, to gain some poundage. Is there anything you'd like to say on stream to, uh, but uh, before, we, before we go? Just that I love you. You guys are doing a great job. Oh, we love you too, Brian. <laughs> so good to see you guys. See you. Take care. Now, as we head into worship here, guys, I just want to leave you with this thought and with this challenge. I think it'd be so easy for us to kind of get distracted on um, what we're doing. I know you might be cooking some, some bacon, maybe even some eggs for your family members. Maybe you're folding laundry. Maybe you're doing some stuff like that. But let's put all that stuff aside and let's actually engage with worship because what you get out of the service will be equivalent to what you put into it. So let's, let's put aside the distractions and let's really go into worship together this morning. Everybody, thanks so much for joining us today. Come on, let's worship together. Let's lift this up. Eyes wide. Yeah.
glory for all you've brought me through and now i'm ready for whatever you want to do i'm moving forward to follow after you and now i'm ready for whatever you want to do let's sing this together now come on your presence is an open door we want you
Hey, thank you so much for joining us at Allison Park Church online today. And hey, let me just say thank you so much for tuning in and for worshiping with us. We're really grateful that you decided to to take this time with us out of your day and just worship the King of Kings. You know, that's really what this moment is is designed to be, right? It's not necessarily something that has to be in a building together. It's not about the ritual of being together, about singing songs. It's about lifting our hearts up as the people of Jesus, as his chosen people, right? And so what I wanna do together is before we sing one more song together, I just wanna reflect on what we were just singing. You know, in this song, we believe that we have a God who gave us a promise that he's always gonna be with us. You know, in the Bible, all throughout it, he says, be strong and courageous for I'm with you. He's, he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And so we stand on that promise in every situation in our lives. We believe that we have a God who's gonna follow us everywhere and have his hand of protection as we worship him and as we surrender our lives to him, right? But it's not just a one-sided thing. It's not just, he'll have his hand upon us no matter what we do. We have to give him everything we are and surrender our lives. And so why don't we take a minute before we sing one more song, why don't we just surrender our, all we are, our families, our jobs, our communities, as we believe for his protection and his favor upon those things, let's just surrender those today. Lord, we just give you everything. We recognize that you gave everything for us and it's because of you that we even have life at all. And so we just take this time to say, thank you for your goodness, Lord.
God, we thank you so much that you are beyond powerful, God, that you are strong enough to be over our fears and our doubts and the problems of this world. And right now, this morning, God, we choose to trust in your power as opposed to our circumstances. And we thank you at the beginning. We thank you now for the answer to prayer that you'll bring, God. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Thanks so much for worshiping with us this morning. As we go to the next part of our service, why don't you go ahead and check out this video. Thanks again for joining us today. I love it that we all can come together and still worship uh, as a whole church family. Mm -hmm. And if you're with us for the first time this weekend, we want to say thank you so much for choosing to, to tune into church this weekend. We actually we have a gift that we'd love to give you, but not just give you, deliver to you. If you're within five miles of one of our campuses here and you text the number guest VIP or you text guest VIP to the number 97,000, we'll have someone actually deliver to your door one of our brand new Risen t-shirts that we just released. And if you'd actually like to get your own copy and you're not a first time guest, you can do so by going to our website, allisonparkchurch.online. Yep, and hopefully everyone's having a good time with the egg hunt. I know I am. Uh, and the kids are hopefully totally engaged with what's happening here. Unfortunately, we can't meet together with Kids Zone. Uh, we really miss that, but we have a lot of great online tools for our kids. That's true. If you're not aware of it, we have something called Kids Zone TV where we release a brand new episode every single week. And it's an experience that replicates the Kids Zone experience that your kids would have here if they were here in person. So there's games, there's music, there's a really good message behind it as well. So I encourage you, after this experience is done, bring that up and go through it with your kids. Yep, my kids watched guys, last night. Guys, guys, it's actually working. Wait, wait, what is that? What's, what's working, Orlando? People are actually finding Captain Face's eggs. Oh. I had my doubts, but you've got some pretty talented people out there. Well, what can I say? We pride ourselves on being good egg hunters. Yeah. Well, I can see why. Keep up the good work. We're here for you, man. Well, let me just remind you how this is going to work. Continue to watch and find all of those eggs because they're going to be hidden throughout our experience together. If you find all of them and you have the correct number, you want to send us a direct message. And everybody that gets the correct number, when you send that in to us, we're going to send you some bonus footage. It's going to be Orlando's Egg Hunt the Movie, uh, sponsored by Kids Zone TV. Uh, really, really good stuff right there. You want to make sure you get that. And we're going to enter in the first 10 people to get the, the correct number. They're going to be entered in to win a $50 video game package. So you don't want to miss out on that. Yeah, now we know that our, our comments have kind of been blowing up here in the chat. So let's jump over to Kelly to see what some of you guys are saying. Kelly. Hey guys. How you, how you holding up? You good? Oh, it's great. I'm having a great time just watching people tune in. We've got a lot of new people, some guests that are tuning in for the first time. And we just want to let you guys know you are so welcome. Um, and we want to encourage you go to Allison Park Church dot online um, and if you have any questions or you want to submit a prayer request you can do that there and it's just so exciting to see so many campuses and so many families tuned in on on our website we've got mount nebo hanging out and on facebook we've got butler and ohio river it's it's just incredible yeah now kelly have you found any eggs yourself i actually did i found something big and spooky <laughs> <laughs> oh no i'm scared whoa oh. That's what kind egg. of chicken laid that egg? I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it was this is an elephant egg. Wow. I didn't yes. even know they had those, but I guess that makes sense. That's where it, that's where it came from. That's right. That's wow. awesome. All right, Kelly, we'll let you go. Let us know if you find any more eggs, and we'll check back with you in a little See bit. You. Yep, and we want to make sure everybody stays connected during this time and keep finding those Easter eggs. But one of the best ways to stay connected is through our online prayer groups. We have those available for everybody, and we want everyone to be able to participate. Yeah, and if you guys haven't been a part of one, let me just say the one that you want to join is the Thursday night at 7 p.m. one because that one's mine and it's the best one that's out there. But seriously, it really, really is a great time to be able to share what's going on in your life and receive prayer for it. You can see these these photos going through of different groups that have happened, but I want to encourage you, that's that's something you want to check out. Yep, yeah, and not just the Thursday night one. We have a lot of good options. You can find all of them online at allisonparkchurch.online. We have uh, groups that are meeting every single day of the week. 
Now, throughout all of this that's been going on, a lot of you have still been really generous with your giving, and we just want to say thank you so much for doing that. In fact, all of our Kingdom Builders that we've been giving to recently have been going to impact families that are right here in the Pittsburgh area with local needs. So there's people who come to Food Bake every single week, who get milk, who get bread, who get eggs and other things like that, basic essentials that you guys are helping provide for. So we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yep, and everything that's given to Kingdom Builders is going to help with local needs, specifically with food. And we're actually going to be launching this week a lot of new initiatives to get food to people that need it. Yeah, so if you want to give to, you can go to the Allison Park Church app or you can text any dollar amount to the number 84321. Yep, and uh, I I think we're getting ready to go uh, into our message. But before we do that, right now is the time to send in your totals. Hopefully you counted all those eggs. It's going to unlock that bonus footage of Orlando's Egg Hunt the movie. And one lucky winner is going to be able to win that video game package. Yeah, so as we get ready to go into Jeff's message again, let me challenge you with this. Let's tune in. Let's really be focused as Jeff brings us the word today. This week is traditionally the peak of hurricane season where something devastating has happened again. Healthcare workers face grave risks. Run from the water. Extraordinary reporting from inside the hot zone. Poor week is traditionally the peak of hurricane season. Hey guys, we are so excited you've joined us today and we have a lot of great things planned coming up this week. This is Passion Week. It's the centerpiece of the story of Christianity and uh, we are going to celebrate together. We can't be in the same room, but I just want to invite you to join me on Good Friday. We're going to have two services. I want to be able to talk to you from my house to yours uh, at noon and at seven o'clock. And we encourage you to come prepared to celebrate communion. So get some crackers or some bread and some juice and be, be ready so that we can honor what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. And then this coming weekend is going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. We're going to celebrate the resurrection. I mean, there are some things happening in our world, but one thing has not changed, and that's that Jesus Christ came back from the dead. It's the right. event that changed everything. And so we're going to have our three normal services times, but then we're going to add one additional. If you want to get up early with me, At 6.30, we're going to have sunrise service. Open your blinds, get a cup of coffee, prepare the communion elements again, and we're going to celebrate together again from my home to yours. We hope you can join us uh, on this week for all of these great events that are taking place. Now, I'm going to team teach today with my wife, Melody, and we just want to say how much we miss you, right? We do miss you. I cannot wait for this quarantine to lift and to be able to hug your neck and see everyone in person. We we really, we're praying for you every day, and we, we do, we really miss you. Yeah, and if you are new to Allison Park Church, we're glad you've joined us. We just want to say we're so happy that you're a part of this uh, this event this weekend. And uh, my wife has just recently was out grocery shopping, and, and they made the change in rules about about, you know, got to wear a mask. So she had real creative. I think there's a picture we can show you of this real creative mask. She looks so cute. And so... I did not attend for anyone to see me. I was trying to go incognito with my hat. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then we're also doing a lot of spring cleaning. Probably you are too, mm-hmm. if you have time. Again, yeah. big shout out to the moms and dads who are homeschooling all of oh, a sudden. Yeah. A big shout out to all those who work on the supply chain. All of yes. you who are healthcare workers. Yes, wow, we love you. you so much. Yeah. And we're going to get into the message now and let me just remind you what we've been covering so far so in the last two weeks we talked about the power Mm -hmm. of what we have in Christ we said that that we are going to pray from a position of victory so this series is called from victory in the first week we talked about how we have the authority to unlock heaven's best and to lock up hell's worst So Jesus said, I'm going to give you keys. And what you bind here on earth when you pray will bind the forces of darkness in the heavens. And what you loose on earth will unlock the things that God wants to do for you in the heavens. And so we've been praying down heaven down to earth. And then last week we talked about this idea that God's posture to us, whenever we go to pray, his posture to us is always yes. Now this is such good news, right? 
It's not yes to everything I want. It's yes to every promise that's in his will. And so I agree with his promises and pray for his will to be done in my life. Now, here's the follow-up question. Maybe uh, some of you are even wondering this, and and that's this question here. So why does it take so long? (laughs) How come if I have this authority and God's answer is yes, that it takes so long to get heaven to come to earth, to get the answers that God has to be released into my life? And why is it such a struggle? And, and, and is there any way that this process can be a bit easier? That's often the question that we ask because we start to pray and we stand in faith and it doesn't happen right away. And that causes us to question, am I doing this right? Is there something I'm missing here? And so I want to remind you of a couple of things. First reality is this, life on earth if you'll give me this, put it on the screen for me now, is not so much a beach vacation as it is a battlefield, all right? We we were born into a place that's in the middle of a battle that's going on all around us. And so life on earth is a battlefield, not a beach vacation. Now, uh, when when God created the earth, he put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and that was paradise. And and, and then one day we're going to die. We're hopefully going to heaven, right, if our faith is in Christ, and that's paradise. But we live in the space in between the Garden of Eden Mm -hmm. and and the kingdom of heaven that we will one day live in and exist in. And in that space in between, we live in a place that's a war zone. I mean, sin, when it came into the world, brought a curse with it. The powers of darkness affect everything that's going on around us. And we go through seasons like this and we can really feel it. And so if you have been living your life kind of thinking that, well, I'm a person of faith and I'm in relationship with God and he loves me and his answer towards me is yes. If you've been thinking that and then assuming that then life should be like a beach vacation where you can sit back and relax and everything's brought to you and it's wonderful and there are no problems. And then all of a sudden there are bombs dropping. You wonder what in the world's going on because you can become very disillusioned if you don't understand that we live in a battlefield not a beach vacation, right? Now, you can actually see this in the life of Jesus this very week that we celebrate. Palm Sunday weekend is what we're in right now. And Jesus comes riding into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey, and they celebrate the fact that he's the Messiah. They begin to call him the king, right? They throw their cloaks on the road and wave palm branches in the air, and it becomes this enormous moment of celebration. It was a high point in the life and ministry of Jesus. And then just a few days later, you see one of his best friends, Judas, has betrayed him. You see Simon Peter is denying him. He's arrested, falsely accused, arrested. He's beaten and crucified. And on Friday night of this particular week, we recognize that if you were to ask the disciples, how's it going? They would have been shell-shocked from the collision that was going on between good and evil in their life, and it seemed like they were losing. And then just three days later comes Resurrection Day, where Jesus comes back from the dead. So we realize we live in the middle of a mix of good and bad that are colliding all the time around us. And and that brings up the second observation, and that's this. Observation number two is that every battle is filled with both opposition and opportunity. The powers of darkness, Jesus said, will stand against the church, but the church will prevail because he's committed to us. And opposition comes, and and, and when opposition happens, when difficult moments arrive in our life, it doesn't mean it's all bad because in every difficulty, there's always something good that God's trying to bring out of it. In fact, there's a a verse of scripture we're going to study today. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. And Paul is the one who's speaking, and he's writing to the church that he planted in Corinth, this city in Greece. And he says, a great door of effective work has opened to me, And there are many who oppose me. He said, right now, there's a great open door. There's a tremendous opportunity, but there's opposition too. And so there's this collision that goes on between the forces of heaven and the forces of hell, between opportunity and opposition. There is a collision that goes on in your life all of the time because we're in the middle of this battle that we're facing. And we really feel it in times like this. But I want to give you some good news. Here's the third observation today, and that's this, that every battle that God allows in my life he intends for me to win. Now, I I preached some of this a couple of years ago in a series that you can find on the app or online called Push. And we were talking about pushing against the darkness and gaining victory in spiritual warfare. And I love this statement. I often say this to myself whenever things aren't easy, that every battle, look, if God has allowed a battle in your life, he hasn't allowed it with the intention that somehow you're going to lose. 
He wants to bring you through this. And part of what he wants to do is take what the devil meant for evil and turn it around and use it for good in your life. And so every battle that God allows in your life, he intends for you to win. Your destiny is victory. That's part of your inheritance. Every promise God has made concerning you, he has said yes to that promise. Now I want to bring Melody in and we're going to talk about this together. So I know that phrase that life is a battlefield, not a beach vacation is especially appealing to you in a way. It, it's yeah. understandable to you because you love the beach. I love the, the beach. beach. That is my ultimate vacation. But but honestly, not just the beach. Like if I'm talking, you know, ultimate, ultimate, that would be you and, you and I on an all-inclusive beach, right? So I'm not cooking and I'm not cleaning and someone else is setting up the chaise lounge and the umbrella and they're bringing me cold iced tea. Like that is the ultimate vacation, right? Right, right. So that's the fantasy right that's now, doesn't that sound like a beautiful place to be. <laughs> yes. Can't even imagine going to no. a place like that right That's now. Right. But if you if you expect life to be like that, like where it's just on cruise control and everything's easy, yeah. Uh, and, and then you realize how difficult it can be. It's disillusioning, right? It is. Dis yeah. yeah. Why, why am I being bombed at? Why am I getting shot at here? Because <laughs> I'm on the beach, right? But if you realize, then then your perspective is different. Yeah. And 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 we got to realize that God's intended us to win. So the battle is there. It's present all around us. But God wants us to pray heaven down to earth, and he wants for us to win. And actually, in this passage, we just read this, 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Paul said, there's an opp opportunity before me, an open door, and there's a lot of opposition. And then a few verses later, he gives the Corinthian church kind of a pep talk of sorts. He does. So, so as he closes the first uh, book of Corinthians, he's written. Paul has written this book to the, the church in Corinth. As he closes it out, I have this um, picture in my mind of watching a war movie with Jeff. So I <laughs> We've watched how many over the years, and you know, at, at certain climactic points, the general comes out and he gathers his troops and he makes this like appeal, this amazing, uh, you know, challenge to the troops about this pivotal point in, in their destiny. And this is kind of how I see uh, verses 13 and 14. He's closing out this book, and this is what Paul says. So, so envision yourself being charged by the general, and and this is what he says. Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong, and do everything in love. Do everything in love. So first, first I want to talk about be on your guard. And really, be on your guard speaks to posture, speaks to your mindset. Um, you know, right now we have so much information that is coming our way, right? And it's good. Like, when you want information. But I found when we were watching the TV, there came a point where it was too much. Like, there was a tipping point, and it went beyond what was helpful and began to be overwhelming. And so we have to be careful. We have to guard ourselves. Be uh, uh, Listen, when it talks about be on your guard, it's careful, alert, prepared. Um, when we are not on the beach, when we're in the battle, our mindset and our posture is completely different. Yeah, so we understand being on your guard. I mean, this is what we're doing all the time right now. Social yeah, distance, wear your mask, yeah. make sure that you wash your hands, be aware that this invisible virus is out there at any particular time. So you got to be careful with it. But there are some other things that if you're not on your guard can affect your spirit, like fear yeah. if you watch too much of the news. Absolutely. Right? Or, or, or just the tension in the home. You're all together and, and you know, we have to really walk in, in love and forgiveness in, yeah. in these times of, of closeness. Be on your guard against anger or yeah. irritability yeah. or temptation or right? whatever it happens to be because right. there is one physical enemy we're facing, but we're also facing a spiritual one. Absolutely. And he wants to get us in different ways. So you got to know your tendency and be vigilant, right? Exactly. So the second, second part, he says, stand firm in the faith. Stand firm in the faith. And notice he doesn't just say stand Stand firm, he says, stand firm in the faith. So when we face battles, when I face battles, for me, I have to anchor myself into the word. Um, I, I, I like to read the Bible. I read the Bible. And when I am in the midst of a particularly tough storm, I read until something jumps out to my spirit. And I, I remember a couple of years ago, um, 
our family, Alyssa specifically, was facing the threat of a virus. I hadn't remembered that it was actually a virus until we were talking about this particular message. But two, almost two years ago now, um, I had gone with Alyssa to her sonogram appointment. She was um, having twins. She was 28 weeks. And they were doing the sonogram uh, appointment where they measure. So they were measuring each of the girls and they were clicking. And if you've ever had babies, you know this takes some time, especially with two. But after after a while, I began to pick up on some tension in the room. I don't know if I could sense the tension of the technician or if it was just taking too long, but all of a sudden, I began to sense that something was not right. And uh, the, the technician excused herself and she came back in with the doctor and the doctor said to Alyssa, to, to me, I'm so sorry, but you've lost baby A. And we were just stunned. We were devastated. And so they began to test Alyssa and they said, we think that you have a virus. We think that you've contracted CMV. And they began to do tests. And, and then they began to say, we're now concerned that baby B has this virus. And they began to do all kinds of testing. And as they began to tell us what this possibility could be, it was, you know, baby B, which was Eden. She could be profoundly deaf. She could be blind. She could have microcephaly where her head was too small, neurological problems. There was all of this stuff that was facing us. And, and it seemed like every time we went back to the doctor with Alyssa, there was more bad news. I mean, the next time we went, yes, you are positive for CMV. And the next time we went a week later, uh, we think that we found a cyst on baby B's brain. And it was just one of these seasons where our world was kind of rocked. And it wasn't, um, they didn't know for sure. They couldn't tell us anything for certain, but there was all of this possibility flowing floating around in the air. And so we began to play, pray on a couple of different scriptures, but there was one in particular that anchored me. And it was, it's found in Philippians, Philippians um, 4, 6, and 7. And I want to read that to you. This is what it says. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you. And I remember as I was reading this, it leapt off the page to me. I knew that this scripture was for me because I had been pulled in different directions. I was on WebMD yeah. looking up what CMV meant and all of the possibilities. And it was not helpful. There was nothing to be done. And I found myself pulled in different directions. So coming back to what the scripture said, don't be pulled in different directions. Yeah. Don't be worried, but pray yes. and, and tell God every detail. So this is what I began to do. And I, I have a text. I still have it. I sent to Matt and Alyssa that day as I was praying and, and walking through the scripture. And I said, a fierce faith has arisen in me. I Come believe on. God has, <laughs> has control of Eden and she is going to be fine. I, I, I believe God has this situation. So when I'm walking through a difficult time, I anchor myself into the word of God. That is how we stand firm in the faith. Not just firm, like holding on, but firm in the faith, firm in his word. Number three. Wait, wait, wait. First, we oh. have to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's so good Eden news. was born. <laughs> yes. She is completely healthy. None of that. None she of that. She is absolutely adorable. Yes, One she of the is. three <laughs> most beautiful grandkids in the world. We're a little biased. <laughs> yeah. And, and so God did hear our prayer, but he it really, was a war. It was right? a battle. That was no beach vacation. It that was, was not. a battle. Every single week, every single step of the process through the delivery was a battle. Yes. And, and we want to just put that verse back up again if we can from moment. This is Philippians 4. I actually think we have, we have quoted this verse every week in the series from different people sharing this as such an encouragement. So this may be one you might grab, want to grab hold of. And this one is actually, I think you have, you've selected the Today's Passion the translation. Pr the Passion translation, And so yeah. just read it through again, Mel. I, don't, I want you to hear this and I want you to, to just receive this as we, as we read it again. Go ahead, take us through. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Now, let's just pause here. I love that part. Mm. This is part of what we have to do, right? Is we've got to take every detail of what we're worried about and talk to God about it, yeah. right? Just pour our hearts out. And then the second part of this, give us the promise part now. Go ahead and 
finish that verse. Mel. So I've given him all the details. I'm pouring out my heart. And then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. So the answer came. Yeah. And it came in the form of a beautiful baby girl. Yes, it did. And we're believing the answer's on the way for you. So the Amen. first step, right, Paul said, here's the challenge. Mel Gibson, Braveheart, he yeah. says, come on now. <laughs> you know, be on your guard. Don't let yourself get trapped by anything the enemy's sending your way. And then number two, stand firm in the faith, right. right? And then the third one, before you read it in this particular translation, I love how one of the translations says like, it says like this, act like men, come on. <laughs> but, but that's not what it says here. Go ahead. And no, read no. That. <laughs> it says, be courageous, be strong. Be courageous and be strong. And I just want to speak to you today. And I want to tell you that God is with you. God is not outside your quarantine. I don't know where you are, whether you have a, a house full of kids or whether you are like the girl I pray with every Thursday. You are with your cat. It's <laughs> you and your cat. God is with you yes. in the midst. And the enemy wants to lie to you that you are alone, but you are not alone. He's with you. And the Bible declares that he goes before before you and he hems you in behind and you are he he is with you in the midst this is so important for you to know so be strong be courageous during this whole battle yeah and that's part of how you can have courage right is that you know you're not alone but the God of the universe, the God of all creation mm -hmm. is with you. In fact, if you can bring up the verse from Joshua, this is actually something that was said to Joshua as he was getting ready to lead the people of Israel into the promised land. He said, keep the book of the law on your lips, right? Stand firm in the faith, get a, get a promise from God. Meditate on it. And the word meditate means to, to repeat it, to whisper it over and over to yourself day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it, then you're going to be prosperous and successful. God's going to bring you out of this. And the next part then goes on to say, have I not commanded you? Same phrase now. Be strong. Be courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Why? For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And this is what we believe for you today, that God has that promise for you. So let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 12 and 13 says, right, be on your guard, right? Be vigilant. Be aware of what's a trap for you, how the devil's attacking you. Stand firm in the faith. Get a word from God and hold it, right? Be strong. Be courageous because God's with you. And then the last injunction here, command, is do everything in love. Now I have to say, when I read through this, this one doesn't seem like it fits. No. The other ones are all challenged. Come on, fight, be on your guard, be yes. ready, stand firm in the faith, and then do everything in love. It almost sounds a little soft right. <laughs> the way yeah. it ends. But I want to just tell you why he says this. Because the greatest weapon that we have against the enemy is the weapon of love. I'll just tell you, there is one thing that the devil has no answer for, and that is the choice of love. God's love for us it brought Jesus to the place of the cross. Jesus died for us because he loved us. And when he died, the devil thought he won. But the love of God brought Jesus back from the dead. That's what we celebrate this week. So the love of God, there was no answer. The devil had no antidote for the power of the choice that God loves us. Same thing is true in your world. When you love you become an unstoppable force because the devil has no answer for that, right? There is no answer for humility. There, there is no answer for you choosing to forgive somebody. There's no answer for when you choose to serve. You then align yourself with what God is trying to do on earth and your love expressed by this choice of grace has such an impact on your world. So let me just say, you know, if you want to, if you want to see heaven come down to earth, you got to do more than pray. You got to act it. Mm -hmm. So this might mean there might be some people that are in your house right now that are annoying you. Maybe you're frustrated. Maybe you're just looking for some space. Maybe, maybe some of this time and space has brought up some old conflicts that you're working through. Let me just challenge you that there is an opportunity here to turn the tables on the enemy and to allow this to be a moment where you can choose forgiveness.
where you can take the time to ex exercise patience with somebody, where you can speak life instead of death, where you can work to change the atmosphere of the space that you live in. It's just a powerful chance, right? We also have a chance to express love in our community. You know, we recognize there's a lot of frustration going on about, you know, what's been decided and the restrictions we have to live under and why is this the way that it is? You know, even some frustrations about the fact that we can't meet together as a church, but we're meeting together online. But let me just tell you this, that the Bible says we don't f fight against any flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Our, the only person we really are fighting against is the powers of darkness that wants to destroy us. But the way that we fight is, is by taking the weapons we've been given, the word of God and prayer and worship and love and, and being a force for the kingdom of God. So when we encounter people in our life, we don't fight people, we serve them, right? We don't, we, don't, we don't seek to gain an advantage through anger. You know, James says that the anger of man does not produce the righteous life that God desires. I know you might feel frustrated, but let me just tell you that anger is, if you just hold on to it or you express it, is only going to give the powers of darkness a foothold in your life. God wants to free you from that, and he wants you to walk in love. And you know, one of the things we want to be able to do as a church, we're getting ready to launch an initiative called Boxes of Hope, where we want to serve our community. We want this to be a chance for us. What Boxes of Hope are is this. The organization called Convoy of Hope is going to be bringing in a truckload of supplies. It's going to be enough to feed 500 families for two weeks. And what we want to do is serve the people in our community who um, have either been diagnosed with COVID-19 or they, maybe they're on self-quarantine because they were exposed to it. And so we want to be able to, in a very safe and sanitized way, take a box, uh, drive it over to the door of somebody who's been affected by this, leave it on their doorstep and drive away so that we can serve our community because as we act in love, this is what Paul's challenge was, we can make a difference in the world. So I just hope that today you, you feel that, right? We're in a battle, but every battle that has been allowed in your life, God intends for you to win. And, and the very first thing I want to challenge you to do is this. Maybe you have listened to this message and maybe you're not sure where you are with God. This is an opportunity for you to give your life to him. Jesus died on the cross for you. That's what we celebrate this week. And he rose from the grave. And if you open your heart to him, he wants to come into your life, forgive your sin, make you right with God. So, so why don't we just turn our face toward heaven right now? And, and if you're tuning in right now, I want you to just close your eyes and reach out to him. And, and in your own way, just say something like this. God, I thank you that you love me, that you died for me. Jesus, that you paid the price for my sin. Forgive me today. I'm calling on your name. I need you to rescue me. Save me. Make me right with God. Give me a fresh start today for I commit my life to you in Jesus' name. And let's continue to pray. And Mel, if you would, just bless everybody before we go today. And so, Lord, I just declare blessing over every person watching today. I ask, Lord, that they would sense in a new measure the peace and the grace of God that is available to us. I pray that they would step in to the love of God, to the divine strength and grace that is available as believers. God, I pray over each family that there would be peace poured out, that the, the oil of the Holy Spirit would be poured out and there, there would be good relationships restored. Lord, I thank you that even in the midst of what the enemy means for evil, you are able to bring good. Yes. So I speak good over every household, Lord. I, sp I speak good over the work of their hands, Lord. And I just thank you that you are at work, that you have gone before us, Lord, and that you are in control. We love you and you love us. We thank you for this truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys so much. Hope to see you this week throughout these Passion Week services. Wow, what an amazing message. I love the concept that we're on a battlefield, not a beach vacation. And it's so good to remember with that context that God is always with us and he's providing us peace. That's such a good reminder today. Yeah, and if you made the decision to follow Christ, we would love to be able to just connect with you. If you text 2020 decision to the number 97,000, we'll have someone there that's able to answer questions, give you resources and be able to connect with you. Yep, and I love all the comments and people telling us some things in the chat boxes. Kelly, what are some people saying right now? 
now. You know, this message really hit home with a lot of people. I feel like this was just like a surge of encouragement. So many people were blessed by the fact that Pastor Mel was willing to talk about personal um, things that she's wow. gone through. And it was just such a blessing. And I have to tell you, we even had some dogs that were tuning in. Wow, uh, that's Teddy impressive. Aiken, who oh, is a dog, <laughs> he really enjoyed the worship. And so wow. it's just exciting to see so many families tuning in. Did he in. get his egg count in? Oh, Did yeah. He? I'm pretty uh, sure he sent a message. Perfect. Yes. It's a smart dog that he can operate a computer you. like that. That's impressive. All right. Thanks so much, Kelly. And thanks so much for sending in your comments here, guys. But I, I, I want to stop that here real quick because I really care about knowing who actually won the egg hunt. But I'm not sure if we ended up. Did we, did we find them all? I'm not we even sure. It. We did it. Wait, wait. What is? What did, what did we do? We found all of Captain Faze's eggs. Wait a second. What do you mean we found them? That's a good point. You didn't do anything. <laughs> I may have been the most critical part of this rescue sure. mission. I brought awareness to the situation. All right, whatever, Mr. Flo floating Robot Head. I I I'm not going to argue with you on that. I just want to know who's the winner here. So we have our contestants put in here, ready to draw for the raffle. Here we go. Let's draw. No I think peeking, we need a Joe. drum roll here. No peeking. I'm watching. And the winner is... Connor DiCaprio. Congratulations, dude. You are the winner of a $50 video game package. I know you're gonna have a lot of fun with that. Look Dang, at those look moves. At, look at Orlando doing it. Okay, go ahead, man. You go ahead. Whew. <laughs> I didn't, I'm gonna have to learn that for youth stuff. Just like do one of those. Well, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for tuning in, Orlando. We'll talk to you later, man. Take care. Thank you all for your help. The next time Captain Faze gets in trouble, I will know where to go. I think we're ready True. for it. He's the man. He's the one who's going to take care of you. Now, let's uh, let's check in with a couple more family members here and say say goodbye uh, to them. I think we have Randy Kerr from Ohio River. Is that correct? Yep. Hello. Hey, hey. what's up, Randy? Good to see you. Randy, how are you guys? We're doing, doing good. good. Randy, let me ask you this. How many eggs did you end up finding? I lost count. Somebody <laughs> hid too many. <laughs> Oh, that's true. That's, it was hard for me to keep track, too. I was just making egg puns and throwing them everywhere. So, <laughs> Well, thanks so much for tuning in today, Randy. It was great having you Good with to see us. You. Uh, let's also jump over to say hi to John Sucker. John, how you feeling, man? Hey, we're doing good out here. How are you? That's doing good. Good. Good to see you, man. Looks, looks like you're out for a nice morning walk. Is that the case? Is you we're, yeah, we're down in the north side doing a nice morning walk. Cool. Oh, that's fun. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. It was great having you. We'll see you later. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Yep, and we want to remind everybody as we close out, there are three main things that we want for everybody. The first thing is we want everyone to join one of those online prayer groups. It's a great way to find some support right now. Yeah, and the second way is if you have kids or students connected with your family or some friends' families, make sure that they get plugged in with Kids Zone TV, Red TV, and the Red Dailies. Yep, and the last thing is we want to care for everybody during this time. So if you have any prayer requests or any needs, just click that tab and let us know, and we'll do what we can to help you out. Yeah, so thanks so much for tuning in this week, APC fam. We will see you next weekend.